So the first thing I'm going to do is build up a ball out of some aluminum foil. Aluminum foil and wires work really well for thermoplastic sculptures because they can take the heat. So that's nice instead of you can't use styrofoam or some plastics as a base. Now that I've got the ball all rolled out, I'm really happy with the size and how smooth it is. I'm gonna go ahead and cover the ball with some more blast. I'll just cut out some rectangular strips. So I just heat up the warbla, let it wrap around the ball, press it into place, and then I'll heat it up some more. Kind of cools off or, you know, doesn't want to wrap around. Anytime it's not flexible, it means it's not hot enough. And I'll just keep heating it up and let it follow the shape of the ball. Cut out some little pieces that are, you know, that kind of stop it from bending since I have this rectangle and I want to make it circular. Now I've got it all covered and I want to smooth out some of these edges. You know, those are kind of bunched up in places, but you can just smooth that out with a ball tool. And then I rolled it. Now I noticed my mouth isn't quite right, so I'm going to go ahead and make an adjustment to that. Make it a little bit bigger so it matches the Pac-Man, you know, little piece of pizza pie taken out of his, his, you know, out of him to make the mouth shape. Now I'm going to use this little saw to cut the foil out. So it's a little tricky. You got to be really careful. And I had to use my X-Acto knife to get it in there some and then just dig out all this foil. Luckily I can save this and use it for another project. Now that I've got that all done, I'm really happy with the shape of it. I'm going to mark his the top of his mouth, and then I'm going to go in and cut out the inside. I want him to have like a lip area that I'm going to put teeth. I want him to be otherwise hollow. So I'm pulling all this foil out with some needle nose pliers, and then smoothing it in with a ball tool. This will give me a nice smooth surface to add some more warbler onto, which I'm just going to go ahead and kind of do the basic shape, like this half circle, and then heat it up, cover the entire inside of him the same way I did the outside. Once that's all done, I'm going to go ahead and do his eyes. So I'm going to draw them on first so I get the basic placement and size that I want. I think that looks pretty good. Heat that up, and I'm going to use a ball tool to make indentions of where I'm going to put his eyes because I don't want him to stick completely out. I want them to be kind of bugged out, but still partially indented. So I think this will work out nicely. Now I'm going to take two balls of foil. And so it's going to be the same way I did the big body part, just a lot smaller. Now this I'm going to use Warbla and Fibra. This is a technique I've used on previous sculptures and it works really well to make a very, very smooth surface. Thebra is very smooth and Warbler has got a little bit of a texture to it. But I, when I've just used Thebra, I feel like it's too gummy. I don't know how else to say it. Like it kind of stretches and it's just, it's like too flexible. And so by putting it over the Warbler, then it has the durability or the, not the durability, but the sturdiness of the Warbler and then the smoothness of the Thebra. It's a really nice technique, especially if you want something really smooth or if you want to add texture to something. Now I'm going to go ahead and heat up some bits and pieces of Warbler to make some eyelids and I'm going to go ahead and smooth those in with a ball tool into the main body to make it, you know, appear to be all one piece. I'm going to keep going in, adding more, texturing that, give him this, you know, kind of angry forehead area. I don't want it to be a happy Pac-Man monster. This guy is ticked. So I've got that in there, adding some wrinkle lines, going through, adding some these like little patches of warbler, almost a ball shaped or patch, you know, spotted there. <laughs> so I was like, what word am I looking for? And I'm adding some texture to that just because I thought it would look really good with a bunch of texture. And here it is. And I'm really happy with that textured look of him. So I want to add some of the pellets that he eats inside his mouth. Since I made that mouth hollow, I made a bunch of pellets. I made some little ones and then some of the power pellets. And so I'm going to Pour those in there, heat up the warbler, push those down to make sure they adhere to the inside of his mouth. I'm really happy with that. So now Pac-Man needs a tongue. Okay, so Pac-Man probably doesn't have a tongue, at least, well, wait, does he? I don't know. I mean, I know the sprite doesn't, but I can't remember if the side art did or not. So anyway, this one's going to have a tongue. Getting it all smoothed out, so I did the same technique of the warbler fibra, and then I'm heating it up. I'm putting some pressure on it to get it to adhere to the inside and i'm really happy with that so now i want to do indentions for his teeth so i did all the little sockets to make little you know 
put little teeth in there, so now I've got to make the little teeth. So since he's a monstrous version of Pac-Man, I'm making some really sharp fangs and a lot of them. Getting those heated up, putting it in place so it, you know, adheres to the main sculpture. You hear that a lot when I work with thermoplastic, you want things to adhere. Getting a bunch of these made. Now, before I go any further, I want to show you why I'm doing this. So I have some arcade games in my cave in the basement and I thought it would be fun you know the Pac-Man one's a little bit shorter than what's around it and I thought it'd be fun to have a monster Pac-Man kind of hanging out on top of it looking like he's ready to eat that ghost light all right back to the project we're finishing up the teeth and then I'm going to attach this iPad stand arm so I had this and it wouldn't work for what I needed it for so I thought hey I'm gonna go ahead and use this to make a stand for the Pac-Man. But I want to put it inside so it's nice and sturdy. So I'm going to heat up the back of it. Made a little X where I thought the center was. Now I'm going to dig that out using my X-Acto knife to cut that warbler and then through the foil. Then use my needle nose pliers to pull out the pieces of foil. And you'll notice there's teeth all over. Yeah, they were not in there sturdy. I kept losing teeth all over, which is fine. I'd rather have them come out now than after he's painted. And I'm like, oh, I thought those were in there well, and they weren't. Getting this heated up, putting some warbler around it so it's nice and secure. Going to use a little ball tool to press that in there and add some texture. Now I've got to fix all these teeth. He even has a loose one right there. Look at that guy. He's, he's had some issues. All right, so I've got all the teeth back in there and I want to add some acrylic gesso. It's a surface prep so then I can paint him. So I'm just going to give him a nice coat of acrylic gesso, cover the entire sculpture with this and let it dry overnight. Now that that's all dry, I'm going to give him a base coat of black. So I'm just using some black acrylic paint. Aww. And I'm going to go ahead and paint the entire sculpture black, including the eyes, which you'll notice I didn't put the gesso on because I didn't want that extra texture that it gives. Now that it's mostly covered with black, you'll see I've, you know, there's some spots that it didn't get into. So I'm just going to go in, touch all those spots up. I even watered down some black to get into the crevices of around the teeth that didn't get covered. But I actually think he looks really cool black. It's I remember this art series I've seen on Toy Break, and they were always black, and that's I think it has a cool look. But Anyway, on to the yellow. I'm going to dry brush some yellow onto his body because Pac-Man's yellow. And I did several coats of this because it wasn't opaque enough to cover through the black, but I wanted that black on there to give that darkness to the crevices in him. But after lots of coats, I was really happy with how it turned out and I can move on to the teeth. So now I'm going to paint all the teeth this pure white, solid white, no dry brushing, just a solid white. You'll see what I'm doing here in a second or a minute. So once I've got those all painted white. I'm going to go in and just touch up a little of the around the edges there where I, the smaller brush. And I'm going to jump around. I painted those power pellets and pellets white. Now I'm going to add some glow in the dark paint. Now I decided I didn't know what I was going to do with the gums and they do look weird black so I'm going to add the yellow around the gums. And once that's all covered I could go back and finish the teeth. But I think this looks a lot better than the black. Okay, I changed my mind. I forgot. I added some glow-in-the-dark paint to the inside of his mouth just to add some more detail. And then I tried painting his tongue with a brush and it looked too streaky, so I decided to switch over to a sponge. Okay, back to the teeth. I'm using a pale yellow to brush on there, and then I'm watering down some brown to give me a brown wash to dirty him up. And look at he's already drooling. Stop it! Okay, so I've got him getting all these teeth all dirtied up, and you'll see here the top haven't been dirtied up the bottom half and I think it makes a big difference. Now that those are all dirtied up, they're almost too dirty. I'm going to go back in and add a very light light yellow. So I'm mixing some white and that pale yellow. Okay, then I'm dry brushing that on just the edges and smoothing that in. And then I'm going to add just a little bit of white to the edges. These are edges that are, you know, they're cleaned off and, and they're the ones that do all the tearing. So now that I'm happy with all the painting, I'm going to add some UV resin over the eyes, the teeth, and inside his mouth. So I've got the eyes, or one of his eyes covered, using the UV light to cure that. And then I'm going to go over the teeth, use the UV light to cure that. And I did actually set this guy in the window for a while to help cure it because I'm using so much UV resin in here. I want to make sure he's completely cured. So I covered his tongue and got some drippies because I wanted his tongue to be not just shiny, but, you know, like slobber and you can see it start to drip a little bit there and then I'm putting it in around his teeth around the gums letting it drip and I want to make sure I have excess so I'm like 
trying to basically freeze it in time almost. See how it's dripping and it's starting to cure, then it just stops and cures and it works out perfect. So here he is all drippy. Thought that turned out really well. So I'm really happy with the sculpt on this guy. Obviously I can't change that now. And I've got the UV resin all done. I've got this little piece of foam that I have him rest on so I don't chip him up while I'm finishing them up. Now, the last thing I want to do is cut up some cloth that I got from a coworker of mine to uh, represent like the ghost that he's ate. So I thought I would have it shredded and coming out of his mouth. What I like about this cloth is it's kind of like a corduroy and I like the fact that it has a texture with it. It's, you know, it makes it more interesting. So I'm just gonna like hook it onto his tooth and maybe have it flopping inside his mouth there. I don't want to cover up too much of the sculpt and I'm not going to attach it any other way because I want to, one, if I decide to take him off or if I'm having him hang, I want him to hang naturally. So it was at this point that I realized I don't like this. I don't like this at all. It's not what I was envisioning. I even tried some smaller ones and they just didn't work. Now, part of the reason why I left this section in was because I wanted you to see that things don't always go as planned and it's okay, as my friend says, to pivot and make changes, you know, even later in the, you know, planning and sculpting process. This project took so long to do, so my original vision had changed a lot and that's that's okay because I'm glad I'm actually, you know, getting this done and not settling and not going with an idea even if it didn't turn out how I wanted to. So it's okay to make those mistakes and, you know, readjust and pivot, pivot and change, you know, change your direction a little bit and go with, you know, what's going to make you happy with your project. And here is the finished Monster Pac-Man. There you can see uh, where the cable attaches using a UV light on the little pellets. Here's a nice side shot. I wanted to do some photos because they seem to show it off the detail a little bit better. And then once we're done looking at these, we'll take them into the arcade and get them set up. But I'm really happy how he turned out. And here he is at home in his arcade, or in my arcade, it's not his arcade, getting ready to eat that ghost that just, you know, that just is in the wrong place at the wrong time. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I had so much fun making this guy and he was definitely a challenge, but I'm ready for my next challenge. I don't have another big project started. I have some other monster projects in the works that I will be doing for some videos coming up, but I need an idea for another video game monster. So if you have an idea for a video game monster, please leave it in the comments down below. I would greatly appreciate it. And if you haven't already done so and you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe. All right. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, never stop creating. Bye.